Hello and welcome. Today we're going to present the financial data analysis project on the Tunisian market and uh, our uh, indexes uh, will be Tuni Index and Tuni Index Training. This project is presented by Mason Mejri, Omay uh, Mamsadam, myself, Fed Abdelkabir, Mahdi Bahdida. So, to choose Tuni Index or Tuni Index Training, this project you will work on the Tunisian market and try to extract the best uh, decision for an investor who is not a risk taker and he or she wants to play safe. So based on that profile, we will build our project and choose the best index for this profile. First, how are we going to avoid the risk cut losing? We're going to do some diversification based on the volatility and the return of each stock. Second, how are we going to make sure that our index is anomaly free and, it's, uh, and it is stable? Uh, in the anomaly detection part, we'll, we will use the LSTM algorithm, long short term memory, which is an algorithm usually used in the deep uh, learning and uh, our, uh, our algorithm will be based on the mean absolute error to evalu ev evaluate the model. Third, how are, we going, how are we going to choose the best component from the index? This will be worked with the correlation matrix and we'll do some component selection and profile analysis, profit analysis, sorry. In the end, based on the previous analysis, we will make our decision. Now, I'll leave Umayma to take you for, uh, for the first tour. Now we will tell you about uh, the libraries that we use. We used Matplotlib for, uh, for visualization, Pandas NumPy for data manipulation, uh, Glob to make a set of, a set, uh, set of data, uh, Kamis to, cl uh, to classify the data, uh, Standard Scaler to scale the data, and Cluster to make a cluster within the classification. Uh, then uh, we have uh, se sequential and uh, dense uh, LSTM uh, to make and uh, uh, re uh, repeat the layer that that uh, that are going to apply on the on the data. Here we first we will start with Tuni Index. The source of our data is from investing.com. Uh, first, we start with specifying the Tuni Index uh, folder that contains Tuni Index elements. Then we imported the elements file uh, files. Uh, in the cell 22, we create our data frames for the files that we import. We did same data cleaning in the uh, in the price columns, and we changed the the date columns from STR type to data type. And now we have a data frame, a data frame of data frames. In the cell 22, we made a data frame uh, of all of the prices from uh, all of the stocks, and we used the data, the, the, the data in the index column. In the cell 23 and 24, we create a list that contains the name of the stocks, as we can uh, see here in the cell uh, 27. Uh, this our data frame. It contains the name of the stocks as uh, column, uh, as column names and data uh, uh, into uh, row names. We remark that uh, some stocks have some missing values, and that's due to uh, these stocks uh, didn't uh, enter in the stocks exchange market. Market, as we can see here, we have. Uh, uh, 11,225 missing values. Uh, now we will try to remove them. First, we will create a data frame that contains only the stocks that have missing values. Uh, here, as we can see, we have 39% uh, of uh, the total data are missing. Here we can see the names uh, for stocks that have missing values. Now we will uh, see uh, the stocks. We can see that uh, some stocks have more uh, missing values than uh, the others. Now we will try to fill the gap. Uh, we will use the uh, 
equation for this uh, operation max values plus mean values divided by two it means we will uh, take uh, the average between them and uh, this uh, and uh, this the visualization for this uh, uh, operation we use we use this uh, equation for two reasons first to not fill the stocks with um, a high uh, values more than uh, it's uh, supposed to have second to not fill uh, the stocks with a low values lesser than it's uh, supposed to have and uh, in the end uh, here we see the data frame that uh, data frames um, uh, with no missing values now uh, mason will explain the diversification Thank you, Umayma. In this part, this uh, diversification will be based on the turnover and volatility of each stock. First, we will calculate the turnover, and based on the results, we'll calculate the volatility. As we can see here, the data frame of these two parameters. In the cell 20, we use the k-means algorithm to classify the data, each with its own center. And in the cell 21, we plotted the elbow curve to fix the optimal number of centers. As we can see on the graph from the sixth center, the line becomes linear. So we take six as the optimum center. Now we will fit the k-means to the data set and we will try to predict our groups. After that, we will do some plotting to understand better the case. The graph shows that STEG is considered as its own group and we have some groups that are a little bit close to each other. Now from the library SciPy, we will import cluster to make the clusters within our data. And as we can see, the centroids are very well represented with their own clusters. This is the final output of the classification algorithm. We have six groups. Each one has a different element than the others. Now I will let my colleague Fedi to explain the anomaly detection part. Thank you, Maisen. Uh, in this uh, part, the fourth part, we'll talk about the anomaly detection. First, we'll start with loading and inspecting our data. We'll start with training index. Our source data is from investing.com. Uh, first, we'll start with importing our data. Then we're going to extract the two first columns that we're going to work on, which is date, column, and close column. Then we're going to, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, flip uh, we're going to flip the data. Uh, so uh, the uh, the the most recent the most recent. Uh, Saving will be in the, in the end. Let's plot. Let's plot, let's plot the uh, the Chini index. Uh, the Chini index data. As you can see here, this is the Chini index data. Uh, we plotted. Uh, we plotted it with uh, Plotly. so it became uh, interactive, and uh, we can see each. Each point with uh, with the date and uh, the um, uh, the price. Then we'll move to the second part, which is data pre-processing, and we're going uh, as first thing we're going to start with changing the type of uh, date column to date time. Then we're going to remove any unwanted characters so we can change the close column from str type to float type then we're going to give each train and test uh, test uh, test data uh, its sizes will be 0 0.8 and 0 0.2 for for test and 0 0.8 from the train then we're going to use the standard scaler from uh, from a scalering to uh, to uh, scale uh, to scale the data. Let's now move on to the training and test split. First thing we're going to create this this function. It will allow us to uh, it will allow us to make our databases, which are the X train and uh, uh, Y train. 
and we're going to use 60 time steps. As you can see here, this is the shape of our data. Now we'll start with building our LSTM of encoder. First, we're going to make the time steps, which, which, which will be the second item in the shape here. And number of features will be this one. So first thing, we're going to create our sequential, which will be based on LSTM algorithm with 50 nodes and 0.2 dropout. And to compile the model, we're going to use the mean absolute error uh, to evaluate our model. This is the summary of the model. And to the train encoder. First, let's talk about this for a moment. And here we're going to we're going to use early stopping from Keras based on the validation loss. This callback will allow us will allow will allow the the algorithm to early stop whenever it thinks that this is the best that we can get. So in a hundred in a hundred uh, epochs and uh, zero point two validation split, the uh, the algorithm stopped in the twenty two epoch on on a hundred. So the program thinks that this is the best that we can get, or this is uh, from from the twenty two epoch. It will be unchangeable and it will be stable. Now to the metrics and evaluate the model. As you can see here, this is the train, uh, the train, uh, uh, the train, and the the, the validation uh, mean absolute error. And the orange is the validation, and the blue is the train. As you can see, that the train has the same shape as the validation loss. And uh, it, it started in the same place, and uh, it uh, it ended in uh, sorry, it started with the same shape, uh, and it ended with the same uh, with the same end. So it has the same shape, and uh, uh, fr from the twenty epoch, as we can, as uh, as we said before, twenty two epoch, it will be unchangeable. Next, we're going to predict the model, and we're going to extract the, the mean absolute error from that, uh, from that prediction. And we're going to plot the histogram of the train uh, mean absolute error. As you can see here, this is the plot. With the same thing, we're going to predict the, the, the test data, and we're going to extract the mean absolute error. And based on that, we're going to fix our threshold. But it's going to uh, evaluate the data of Gini index and uh, give us the anomalies. So as you can see here, this is the threshold with 1.5 measurement. And in here, we're going to see the threshold in the plot. So red line is the is our threshold, and every point above this this threshold will be considered as anomaly. This is the data frame of the anomaly, and this is the plot. The, this plot contains the data from Gini index, and the red points are the anomalies or or this is the considered anomalies from the algorithm. Uh, I guess it considered a whole two weeks or three weeks uh, with separate two or three days as anomalies. And this is maybe due to, to some cyber hacks or some breakdown in the exchange market. Now I'll leave Mahdi to uh, explain more the correlation matrix and the profit analysis. So thank you, Fedi. 
So this is the correlation matrix. As we can see, it's not really readable and we can't really get any information with the naked eye. So we try to extract uh, the information about the stocks that are negatively correlated with each other with the coefficient under minus 0.8. And then we uh, calculated the generatability of the all the stocks available, and uh, the rentability of the new portfolio, which is con which consists of uh, 57 pairs uh, of stocks, as shown here. And this is an example of five uh, pairs of uh, stocks cor uh, correlated with, with each other. And here is the all the, st the stocks that are correlated with each other from the highest rentability to the lowest but positive uh, rentability. And then we try to keep, uh, we made a list of the names of the stocks uh, that we are go uh, going to keep. Yeah. So then we are going to calculate the expected portfolio daily performance with the random weights. We set the C to 100. And we have the portfolio simple return will be under uh, 0 0.003. Uh, we set the random weights to a maximum of 100 million. And then we are going to calculate the daily expected portfolio return and the expected annualized portfolio simple return. And then we are going to plot the daily cumulative simple return and then uh, and the volatility of each stock. So this is the result, the daily expected portfolio return with 0.03% and an expected annualized portfolio simple return with 8.18%. So this is the daily cumulative simple returns. And this is the volatility of each stock. So I will let my colleague Omaima start with tune index 20. Thank you, Mahdi. As the same before, we will follow the same steps as Tuni Index. So I will go briefly on this second tour. We specified the, the, the forward from Tuni Index 20 that contains its elements. After importing, uh, we will create the data frame for data frames as before, uh, with same cleanings and types transformation. After that, we created the final data for, uh, frame with the data in the index and the price of uh, the stocks as values. As we can see here, the data frame for Tuli Index 20, it has the same structure as the, the data frame for Tuli Index, but definitely we've, we have uh, less uh, missing values. We will try to file uh, them with uh, the same method as, be, uh, uh, as before. Uh, we remark that uh, we have 10% uh, of elements that have missing values. Uh, as we can see here, we have uh, only two stocks that have missing values. And even we see the graph, we, rem we remark that uh, it's not uh, as uh, simply as Chuni index. Now we will fill uh, them uh, with uh, the same uh, equalization as before. And this, uh, and this, the final graph for Tuli index 20 without missing values. Now I leave my son explain the diversification part. Thank you again, Umaima. As I explained before, the diversification will be based on the turnover and volatility of each stock of Tuni index 20. First, we will calculate the turnover and based on the result, we'll calculate the volatility. And as we can see here, the data frame of these two parameters. In the cell 94, we use the k-means algorithm to classify the data, each with its own center. And in the cell 95, we plotted the elbow curve to fix the optimum number of centers. This graph shows that starting from the fourth center, the line becomes linear. So we take four as the optimum center. And now we will fit the k-means to the data set and we will try to predict our groups. And after that, we will do some plotting to understand better the situation. The graph shows that ICF and CC are considered as their own groups and there are other groups that are close to each other. 
As we can see, the centroids are very well represented with their own clusters. This is the final output of the classification algorithm. We have four groups. Each one has a different element than the others. Uh, again, I will let my colleague Fedi uh, to explain the anomaly detection part. Again, thank you, Maysan. We will continue with the anomaly detection part in the Junior Index training part. So first, as before, we're, uh, we're going to start with loading and inspecting the Trini Index training stats. Uh, this, as uh, as Trini Index, uh, the data source is from the seed.com. So uh, first of all, we're going to import the data and we're going to extract the date and close the columns. And we're going to flip the data for the same reasons as before. And here we're going to inspect the, the uh, Trini Index training data. Again, we use the plotly to visualize this uh, this data, and as you can see, it's interactive, and we can see each point in this plot. To the data preprocessing, we're going to change the type of date column to date time, and we're going to remove uh, any unwanted characters in the, in the close uh, column. Uh, so we can change the type of closed column from SVR to float. And here we're going to uh, we're going to fix the size of the train, uh, the train data and this data. Then from escalating, we're going to use standard scalar to scale our data. And here, as before, we, uh, we use the same uh, the same function. To uh, the, this function, this function will allow us to create our uh, x train and y train data, and x test and y test data. And yeah, as you can see here, this is the shape of x train grain. building an, an STM autoencoder. As before, we're going to fix the time steps and the number of features. And this is, is based on the uh, uh, X train and the Y train. So from, uh, from, from QRS, we're going to uh, import the uh, sequential and uh, dance LSTM dropout Repeat vector and time distributed. Our model will be the sequential of uh, LSTM algorithm with 50 nodes and 0 0.2 uh, dropout and um, uh, and uh, and uh, and we're going to compile our compile our model with the mean absolute error to evaluate it. This is the summary of our model. If the, we're going to train our uh, autoencoder. As before, we're going uh, to uh, use the early stopping from Keras with uh, based on the validation loss with 100 epochs and 0 0.2 uh, validation split. And we're, going, uh, and we're going to set the shuffle to false. Instead of 22 epochs, uh, this train uh, it took only 10, 10 and 100 epochs. So we're going to evaluate the model. Of course, always based on the validation loss, the mean absolute error. So as you can see here, uh, the validation and train loss has the same uh, shape, decreasing uh, at the first and Whenever it increases in the one, it increases in the in the second. Uh, as you as you can as you can remark here from the tenth, it uh, becomes uh, it becomes uh, very similar. So to the next step, which is uh, predict, predicting the X train and the um, uh, the X test, and we're going to extract the uh, mean absolute error 
from the train data and uh, the mean absolute error from the test data. Uh, as you can see here, most of the um, um, most of the mean absolute errors are under eight, so we're going to use that as as our threshold, and we're going to fix it right here. Now to plot it, as you can see here, this is the threshold. This is the the red line is the threshold, and uh, as before, every point above this threshold will be considered as anomaly. This is the data frame. Uh, as you can see here, we have only three uh, three considered anomalies. Let's see the plot. They are uh, three consecutive days, 23, 24, 25 of March, 2020. Uh, this is actually quite uh, interesting because it's very close and uh, uh, it's the first period of the quarantine. It might be a cyber hack uh, in the exchange market. Now to let uh, Mehdi explain more the correlation matrix and profit analysis. So thank you, Fedi. So this is the correlation matrix. As you can see, it's not really readable. So we are going to extract only the negatively correlated stocks with a coefficient under uh, minus 0.8. Then we are going to calculate the rentability of each uh, stock and then the rentability of the correlated stocks, with which we have uh, three correlated stock, stocks, as we can see here. And then we classify them from the highest rentability uh, to the lowest. And this is the list of uh, the stocks we are going to to uh, use. So basically here we are going to calculate the expected portfolio daily performance with random weights. We've set uh, the C to 100. We have the portfolio simple return set to under uh, 0 0.003. And the weights are uh, will be generated randomly between one and 100 million. And then we are going to calculate the daily expected portfolio return and the expected annualized portfolio simple return. Then we are going to plot the daily cumulative simple returns and the daily simple returns. Uh, so this is the result. We have the daily expected portfolio return uh, is 0.034% uh, and the expected annualized portfolio simple return is around 8.7%. So this is the daily cumulative simple returns. And here is the volatility of each stock. So results and discussion. In the diversification analysis, we've seen that twin index is more diversified than twin index 20. In the anomaly detection analysis, we've seen that twin index and twin index 20 show similar attitude. In the profit analysis, we've seen that twin index 20 promise more profit than uh, twin index with around 1.5%. Conclusion, investing in twin index is the best choice. Thank you for, for your attention. <laughs>